there are very few universal truths that hold common across every one and everything. Everything else is personal or self-truth. How do I understand who I am? And how can then I bring that into the rest of the world? You'll know what your self-truth is. If we don't have the awareness of our own self-truth that limits our ability to recognize truth around us. I'm simply expressing what is true for me at this point in my life. And I'm asking you to honor what is true for me. By the time I was 25, I was unhappy. I had everything you could want on paper and I was very unhappy. It's because they weren't my self-truths. The name of our organization, Sui Vera, means self-truth. And it's just as relevant now as it was when we came up with it. It's really meant to be an energy that sets the tone for uh, what Sui Vera is, is all about. And why, in many ways, why we're all here, what we're experiencing. And our last podcast, we really did a deep dive into what is spirituality in modern life today. And I feel like this is a great segue into uh, self-truth because they really go hand in hand. Yeah, completely. And I know when we first set up the organization, we had gone through a ton of different names. And I was to the point where I was like ready to punt and say, I don't care, hire somebody else to create the name. And you went into meditation and said, no, I feel it. I know it's right there. Hey, Heart Leader community, we are so excited. The Silence Your Inner Critic Immersive Retreat is open for early registration. Click the link below to learn more and secure your spot today. And you came out of this amazing meditation and you said, I don't even know what this means, but I got Sui Vera. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay. And then you went and you researched. And can you explain a little bit of what you found when you researched what the name Sui Vera meant? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you were, you were just really diving into me about transdimensional meditation. And so for those who are unaware, that type of meditation is moving through dimensional structures. And oftentimes in that, in that type of meditation, it also means uh, moving through timelines. So pulling from the future into the now to help solidify the future. Uh, sometimes we experience that as like deja vu. But when you have, when you go into meditation and you really do a deep dive into it, this can be a great way to uh, facilitate uh, the life you desire to experience in many ways. And so uh, with that intention and that great guidance from you, uh, I went into that meditation with that, with that purpose and intent. And through that, I felt like I was able to see this name that I'd never heard of, you know, Sui Vera came forward. I saw it in, on logos. I saw it on, you know, just uh, everything that was a part. It was like, whoa, what is, what is this even, what is this word? I've never even heard of it before. And when we looked it up, we talked about it. Like, you haven't heard it either. And, you know, I know you had a little background in French. And so you're like, yeah, I kind of, kind of feel like I, I, I know parts of it. I'm not really sure, but it's like French uh, slang, but yeah. <laughs> definitely not. Yeah. Uh, and so we looked and Sui um, uh, was meant self and Vera meant tr uh, truth. And so in together Latin. in Latin. Yes. In Latin. Thank you. In Latin. Yeah. Not, French, not French. In Latin. Yes. Uh, and so it was like, wow, this is, this is amazing. I mean, it's not like a, a, an actual word. It's kind of two things pulled together. And, you know, in some ways, it's much like our, our spiritual spirits and our spiritual experience and our human experience, you know, being pulled together to create one outcome. And that is, in this case, self-truth. And it really, really aligns with, in many ways, you know, why are we here? Yes. And... You know, we, we don't hide this at all. We are such comic book, superhero, sci-fi, adventure kind of people. 
right? So when we were building this whole Suivera experience, this whole organization around it, we really loved the self-truth aspect because that's really all we have, right? When we think about truth and universal truth, there are very few universal truths that hold common across everyone and everything. Everything else is personal or self-truth. And that is based on your perspective, where you are in your life, and it'll shift. So all we can do is come at life from our own self-truth narrative. And that's kind of like living your own superhero journey or your own sci-fi experience or what do you want your life to look like? What experience do you want your life to be, including your spiritual experience, right? Mm -hmm. And so we started crafting this organization around that. How do you begin to have this amazing spiritual journey without having everything else tell you what that should be? Mm -hmm. How do you get in touch with that? And how? what part does religion play in that? What part does your health play in that? After all, this is your ship. Mm-hmm. This is your temple. This is your everything that your spirit is playing in. Mm-hmm. So what does that mean for you? And what does everything around you interplay into that? And so we started having that exchange, right? And how does it shift your self-truth over time? Yeah. And self-truth, uh, in a world where truth almost feels elusive, we are getting so many different types of truths. It could be real truths. It could be mistruths. It could be, you know, totally you know, made up. You know, just, it's, it's, you know, it's different levels of what truth is. It's, it's, it's daunting to to look out and you know if you if you want to understand something in the world you look out and you start kind of googling it or researching it and all of a sudden there's all these articles on why it is why it isn't why it's in between and you're like well what what do i believe and but now i'm going to quote morpheus right yes. what is real what is real yes exactly right? i love it <laughs> this goes back to the whole <laughs> sci-fi aspect yes what is truth yes. what is real exactly is there a spoon? <laughs> this is, these are great questions and part of the internal discovery. And, you know, we often talk about, um, like in our previous podcasts about uh, relationships, and we talked about how um, our limitation of our compassion to ourselves limits our ability to have compassion for others, right? Yes. I feel like that also follows suit when it comes to truth. If we don't have the awareness of our own self-truth, that limits our ability to recognize truth around us. And so that's why this is so vital to how we approach Sui Vera and spirituality as a whole. You know, we, we talked about in the last podcast how it's a, it starts from within. It's an internal experience moving into the external. What's the best way to build a strong concrete foundation it's on building self-truth. You know, how do I understand who I am and how can then I bring that into the rest of the world? Like what is truth for me? Yeah. And even a heart leader, yeah. right? You, it's challenging to lead from the heart center if you don't know what's in your own heart. Yeah. And it's challenging to get to that place if you don't have tools or resources to know how to get back there. Mm -hmm. When everything else in the world has guided you to live a life outside of you, Mm -hmm. what do you do to navigate back in? Mm -hmm. And a podcast is going going to get you so far, Mm -hmm. right? Any, we are huge consumers of podcasts. It's not just our own. Like we love listening to podcasts because there are so many out there that give you so many great insights. Aubrey Marcus, we love you. Mm -hmm. Um, 
There are just a ton of fantastic individuals. You could give people lists and lists upon lists. Definitely. But... You also need tangible tools and things that a community that can rally around you when you have questions. Mm -hmm. That's why we have an organization that's behind this. So it isn't just you have a podcast and we provide you with information once a week. We also wanted to have an organization and all of these tools and resources and a community of over a million people that can rally behind when we start to have these questions about, all right, I desire to know what my self-truth is, but I've never been given a space, a true space to feel safe, Mm -hmm. to explore what my self-truth is. Because the moment I would start to tiptoe outside the box of what other people told me my truth is, I would get put right back in the box. Mm. And we want to begin to create that safe space where individuals could start to explore and begin to understand. Now, that doesn't mean that you won't hold to the same truths that you currently have. Mm -hmm. But at least then you'll know. You'll know what your self-truth is. Is it still in alignment with exactly where you are now? Or... Could it possibly expand to include a few other things? Mm -hmm. Whether that be in your spiritual quest, whether that be in just awareness of new boundaries that you may desire to hold, whether that is in what you, like your physical form, maybe you enjoy yoga and you never knew that. Maybe you're looking at a different nutritional approach and you never knew that. There are all of these things that we can begin to explore and expand when we start coming together with people from all over the world mm-hmm. in a community of like-hearted individuals. Yes. So well said. It's, I know I felt like I, I grew up in society around me was constantly telling me who I should be, how I should act, what I should do. And this is what it looks like to be a quote unquote successful man. Mm -hmm. And eventually by the time I was 25, I was unhappy. I had everything you could want on paper and I was very unhappy and I was never an unhappy person. And because I followed those things because they weren't my self truths. They were the truths of others or what I realized, the illusions of others, they weren't even truths. They were sold to me as truths. And it was my opportunity to not be a victim of that, but instead rise up and start to recognize that I have the ability within me to choose my self-truths, what aligns with me. And I realized that through your amazing help, my love, that I, I can shift them. I, you know, my own, it's all my own personal responsibility. And that's oftentimes I feel like there's a deep correlation between self-truth and personal responsibility. And oftentimes when we have a lack of clarity around our own self-truth, it's hard to take personal responsibility. But when we do have that deep clarity, that passion, that conviction towards our own self-truth, then personal responsibility it just becomes like almost obvious. It become like, it, it just is. And, and that gives you the most empowerment that you can imagine. And then you can breathe that into all that you do and all that you experience and all that you are. And then it's like, wow, I get to see, I get to see me for who I am. And then I want to show that to others. And that's a beautiful, beautiful thing. And in return, I start seeing that Others are, are who are on that journey as well. And I got to be like, whoa, like I'm seeing you at a whole other level. Yes. And like that's exciting. Like I get to see my friends who have been around forever and I get to get to see them grow and expand and, and become closer to that. Like that's awesome because they're experiencing their self-truth. And then we can align in those self-truths and, and expand each other. It's like, whoa. So, uh, and and that's something we do in our relationship that's been extremely helpful in keeping us so tied and we would say our our 10 years in our honeymoon phase. (laughs) Yes. And it's interesting. It's that safety we need to feel though. And 
if we don't have that place where we can feel safe to start asking ourselves those questions. Like for me, that was a huge part of it. And a key reason why you know, before we started Sui Vera and we started the Heart Leader podcast, I had an organization that was somewhat similar, just not as expansive as once you came on board. Like, again, we started, we expand. When we feel safe, we expand. Mm -hmm. And the whole reason for that was I didn't have that sense of safety, not because I didn't have people who loved me. It has nothing to do with that. Yeah. It has everything to do with my own personal responsibility, as you pointed out, and my own internal sense of safety to begin to ask myself those questions of what do I believe? What do, what is real for me? And if I start to express a little bit of what feels true for me and somebody immediately goes, no, that's not true. Do I have the bravery within me to say, I honor that that's not true for you. I'm not asking you to change your belief of what is true for you. I'm simply expressing what is true for me at this point in my life. And I'm asking you to honor what is true for me. And that is a brave, brave step. And I can honestly say that I hadn't gotten to a point where I could courageously at all levels of myself, say that to everyone around me until I got to the stage where I could courageously say that to everyone around me. And having a sense of community is key in that. Mm -hmm. It plays a pivotal part because there is that safety in numbers kind of feeling, right? When you feel like somebody sees you and understands where you are, even if they don't agree with you. We're not all going to agree on everything, but when you feel like you're at least supported, even if they don't understand, that makes a world of difference. And that's what we desired to create. I did it on a very small scale, and then you came in and we went, Phew, and we created it on a much larger scale because the world needs that right now. We all need that safe space to explore our personal truth. Because how are we collectively going to know who we are as a human kind if we don't have that opportunity? Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. What do we stand for? Mm -hmm. Do we stand for love? I believe we do. Yeah. And this self-truth is such a key part of self-discovery. And it's a way for us to create a, almost in many ways, a barometer. And, and that's so critical, you know, when it's, when we make choices in life, it's a way for us to seek to understand who we are. And to me, that's putting our, uh, as creator beings, we have that opportunity in every now moment to make a choice and through that choice and we can reflect back who we are. And so by taking the time to understand our own self-truth and then making choices based on that, that can really solidify us as, a, uh, as an authentic self. Sometimes it also can. <laughs> Sometimes we yeah. make a choice. We're like, oh, wow, I did not see that coming. Why did, you know, I, do why that? did I do that? And that happens <laughs> to everyone. That, yeah. <laughs> that happens to everyone, and that's okay. You know, that's... That's part of the experience. You know, might think one way and then have the outcome be like, oh, that's, yeah, okay, that's not, I need to make an adjustment and move. And, and that's why flexibility is so important. You know, it's, it's, it's good to have these self-truths and to have conviction around them. But there's also an importance around flexibility. If, we're, if we have too much rigidity around what we believe, uh, especially when it comes to ourselves, and when things are too rigid, they can break. But when things are flexible, it gives them that, that movement and, and, they, and it's more malleable. And it's malleable not in a negative way, but actually in a very positive way. It's like, hey, I can pivot, I can move and I can shift into something that is a greater sense of me by sometimes understanding what I'm not. Yes. 
And I spent a lot of time understanding who I'm not. And I spent a lot of time not making different choices until I did. Yes. And once I did, then it was like an epiphany. I was like, whoa, okay. There's a lot of the actions that I'm taking that I am not aligned with anymore. And I, I, there's so much here that is not my self truth. So pull back, start from square one. And let me understand, are there things in my life that people have said that I also agree with? Sure. Are there things that people said that I don't agree with? Sure. And then start chipping away. Hey, Heart Leader family, it's Austin. I'm so excited to share that the early registration for the Silence Your Inner Critic Immersive Retreat is now open. It's October 10th through the 14th of 2024. Click the link below, check it out, and can't wait to see you there. That's a great thing. And, and what, are, what are my own core values? Like if I, if I desire to embody love, what does that mean? And, and how, do I, how do I actually do that? And I had mentioned earlier, like our connection with the whole superhero universe. And yeah. I feel like that's one thing that we can learn from that type of a universe is every superhero goes through that journey of learning who they are as that superhero, right? They don't just come out and they're like, whoa, I am the superhero. They fail and they struggle and sometimes even once they have those superpowers, they still plummet the moment they hit that supervillain that causes them to doubt who they are again, right? And every supervillain that they run into may cause them that moment of doubt, right? Because they have to learn a new personal truth. They have to sit with it again and to me, that is just such a great life analogy because I go through that. I am the superhero of my own life story. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that there isn't something that comes up in life that sets me back on my heels and makes me go, wait a second, I never thought that I would encounter this. But now I'm up against it mm -hmm. and I have to figure out what I stand for face to face with this. Mm. Who am I? What is my personal truth now that this is in my reality? Mm. And when we can begin to look at ourselves, whatever your version of that is, like for us, it's that, right? Mm. But whatever your version of that is, we like to think of, you know, our. Suivera, the organization we have, is kind of our own little shield, right? <laughs> Nick Fury, we're out there creating and supporting, helping individuals. We create these tools, right, that help the superheroes that we're empowering to go out and be the superheroes of love, mm -hmm. sharing and invoking love in others so that we can all become the superheroes of our own life story. But if that doesn't fit or resonate with other individuals, that helps us every day get out of bed and be excited to do what we do. Mm -hmm. So much so. But find what does that for you. What gets you excited about your personal truth every day, about going on that inward journey? And when you come up against something in life, whatever that f you feel like a foe is, how do you turn that inward again and say, now that I'm up against that, how am I going to learn about myself mm. instead of turning it outward and going, oh, it's their fault, mm. which hits that personal responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I mean, friction is key. It really is. Just because if you, if you see individuals who appear to have internal harmony or, hey, for really clear, like someone who looks like they have their stuff together. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're not lacking friction. Yeah, no. They're not lacking, like, they're probably, the only difference between you and them is that they're embracing it, is that they are willing to move through it. And, and that's such a great reminder that we, we often need this friction to understand who we are. And we get the opportunity in every now moment to uh, reinforce who we are. Yes. And I love, as you beautifully said, not, every, not any one 
choice is uh, the definition of who we are. However, when we do have a continuity of choice and we keep choosing the same thing, that, that does create a, a definition in some way. Now, it's not finite. It's not limited. We, at any point, we can say, nope, we no longer want to be that way. I know I spent years choosing who I wasn't. And so, you know, I've, I've been there and it made me sad and it made me uh, feel less than and unworthy. But it's, it's hard. But I wasn't, I, I wasn't willing to meet the friction. I wasn't willing to meet myself at the potential that I felt like I could be. And until I made that choice and then continued to choose that again and again and again and again, then the version of me who I didn't enjoy felt like long in the past. It feels like a completely different life that I can't even like, now I can't even, I'm looking back in 10, 10 years ago and I'm like, I, I don't even remember that version of me. It's so far behind. And so, and it's because that willingness to embrace that friction of being willing to say, you know, who am I in this moment? Who am I in this choice? Am I still in alignment? And if I'm not, that's okay. That's okay. This one little thing that I do doesn't, you know, ruin the whole thing. It's, you know, how can it make me even that much better? And my dips down are just a lot less, <laughs> a lot less uh, intense. Let's just say they're like little, little dips, and then they it's come not back. like a yo-yo. Yeah, it's not like a yo-yo. <laughs> exactly, exactly like it used to be, right? Yeah. And so that's that's so important. It's in self-discovery. I feel. I agree. And when it is a yo-yo, like just enjoy the ride. <laughs> we kind of we tend to I don't desire to overgeneralize this but I've seen enough of it in patterns where we make that yo-yo effect so significant mm -hmm. and we do define ourselves based on those moments in our life like, oh, I have dipped all the way down into this behavior pattern that I don't align with. And so now I am judging myself based on that behavior pattern. And now I've pulled myself out of it, but I'm still judging myself based on what I did. And so I've chained myself now to the past. Well, it's hard to move forward into the future when you've changed yourself to the past, even though you've chosen a different behavior. You're out of it, but you're chained to something that you did, not what you're choosing to do now. Mm -hmm. And that is a weight that you're never going to be able to propel yourself forward if you stay mm -hmm. just chained to. So you have to be willing to cut that bond and say, I am not my past. Mm. I am not that. Even if it was a series of choices, like, I, don't, I don't need to be that ever again. And if I happen to drop back down there again, okay, well, I've cut that bond before. I can do it again. Mm. No matter how many times you've done it, do it again. Do it again until you don't have to do it again. Mm -hmm. You're going to judge yourself far harder than the majority of people in your life. Not everyone, but it's your personal truth that you're going to take with you when you leave. So, again, own that and let it go. Yeah. It's so well said. Um, I, I feel like there's it's hard to apply that mainly because I feel like in society we've kind of been taught to find ourselves. And I feel like there's a, a fundamental struggle with that. Yeah. And it's because how can you find something that you already are? Those are two different things. And so self-discovery isn't finding who you are. It's, experience, it's experiencing who you already are in a unique and different way. 
and expressing yourself. And I feel like that's really, to me, that's the more exciting part. And it's like, it, you know, we've talked about this before. It's not, you know, if we want to be patient, it's not like there's just fairy dust of patience like spread on us and we're like, oh yeah, I'm now patient. It's like, no, if I want to be patient, patient, then opportunities are going to come forward. And then I have the active choice to be patient in those situations. And then over time, the more that I choose them, then patience becomes, you know, not just second nature, but first nature. And so if we take that same concept to uh, understanding our own self-truth, then every opportunity that is brought forward in our, our waking life is one to help reinforce who we already are. And so it's not just a magic dust that we're attempting to find and grab outside of ourselves and pull it in and say, this is who I am. It's just, un it's, it's remembering who we already are in this experience of being human and breathing that into everything that we are experiencing and saying, yes, this is, this is who I continue to choose to be. And it's a, uh, it's a beautiful experience to uncover who you already are. It's uh, it's like taking a blindfold off and just being like, wow, you know, I can now really see. Yeah. The only way I could see personal discovery being like uh, something other is if you look at it as though you're an archaeologist internally and you're going on an internal dig, right? And uncovering things that have always been there, you just covered it up with so much crap, <laughs> yeah, right? <I> like that. <laughs> and so now you have to go in there with your little tools and just uncover all that you've covered it up with. But you're right. It's always been there. It's not as though you suddenly are like, I don't know. I just grabbed it from out here and brought it in. That's not personal discovery. That's personal growth. You're adding to yourself. Mm -hmm. But discovery means that there's already, it's been in there. Mm -hmm. You're just rediscovering the fact that it's in there and you're awakening it again. Yeah. So be the archaeologist, right? This is your Indiana Jones moment. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I love it. But personal truth is personal. Yeah. And this is another one of my big things in my own life. The fact that it's personal means to me that I have to be highly mindful of not then taking it and attempting to make many versions of my personal truth in everyone else around me. That is the quickest way of alienating the people that I care about the most. And it is a trait that I see very common. We, especially in the key areas of religion and politics and not that we intend to. I, I don't see intent. It is habit. Mm -hmm. And when mindfulness isn't applied to habit, like we like being around people who are like us. It is an expression of care and love, right? Mm -hmm. This means a lot to me. I love you because it means a lot to me and I love you. I feel it's important that I share this with you and you get the same out of it that I do. So I do feel strongly that when this happens, people do have, not everyone, but most people have a pure intention of, I'm getting so much out of this, I desire to share it with you. Mm -hmm. But your experience of it may not be my experience of it. And so if I suddenly go, okay, this personal truth is so amazing to me. Let me make you a mini version of me. Mm -hmm. Then what I'm doing is stifling your personal truth in honor of my personal truth. Instead of saying, Austin, what is your personal truth in this area? Express that to me. And if you don't know, then maybe go on an archaeological dig in this area mm. and uncover it for yourself. And then once you know, share it with me and let's find out where they intersect. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. I mean, that would, 
to me, that completely transforms the whole process of self-discovery. It, you, you beautifully say that all of humanity is independently dependent. And this allows, to me, this is in alignment with that. Like what you're talking about is very much in alignment with that. It allows for a safe collaborative experience while honoring the individual experience as well. Um, and they might align. I mean, through that process, you might like, there are things that you have said. And when I took the time to understand within myself, I'm like, wow, you know, I, I really, I agree with that. Like I feel that to the very core, like it feels innate in, in myself as well. Awesome. Like that's, but that's still my choice. Yeah. And I can choose not to in any moment, but for me, it's a truth. So I feel very connected to it. And, and through that we can, we connect at a deeper level. That's, and that's a beautiful thing. But I think you're hitting on a really good point here. Then, and this is something that we seek to do even through this podcast is that we're not here to tell anyone how to be or what to do or, you know, any of this advice is not necessarily like something it's our own personal experiences and, and we're in the process of just seeking to share. And if it aligns with you, then great. And if it doesn't, Hey, that's okay too. And oftentimes when things don't align, that can create friction. And honestly, that could really help me and you, uh, shape our own self-truth. Yes. And that's a beautiful thing. It doesn't have to be a negative. It doesn't have to be a tear down or a separation or a division that these, these, this friction again, as uh, pulling back to that is a positive thing if we allow it to be. And so when we can all share ourselves truths, then we can start to understand the collective truths and through the collective truths, we can maybe then start to have a deeper connection to the universal truths. And so they flow both ways. It's never one sided. And I think that's again, is one of the big misunderstandings of humanity is that it seems like all really like a lot of the relationships are one sided when in fact, all of them are, are, are more a two way or more like it's all collaboration. It's all collaboration with us. So with, multi-dimensional. Yeah. And so quantum sciences have shown us nothing. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and so if we believe it's only one way, then that's just an illusion that we're creating. And that's an opportunity for us to grow and expand our own awareness and maybe recognize that there are some things we need to, to, to focus on to help expand that awareness. And I constantly still do that. <laughs> you know, it's like that's part of self-discovery. That's part of personal growth is, is, is the more that we, I know the more that I expand my awareness, um, then the more that I, I, I bring in other, other people's ideas. Like, you know, what, what do you think, you know, what, what are their perspectives? Yeah. And, and it's like, okay, it's not just mine. It's also theirs. And then whether that's an individual or uh, a community, a collective, the world, the universe, and knowing that they're playing a part in my truth, I'm playing a part in their truth, and so it's all it's all one. Um, it can feel daunting in some ways, but it also can feel very liberating because it means that because you're in a collaboration, you're not alone. Yeah. And when you're on a journey of self-discovery, sometimes it can feel like you're very alone. Now, I do want to address one thing we talked about at the very beginning, or you brought up, which is uh, the transdimensional meditation and going forward on a timeline. And oh, yes. I'm sure for a lot of people that might have been like, what? <laughs> we likely can't get into it given the time that we have left on this podcast, but I think that would be a great... Sure topic for us to talk about in a future podcast because when we first started in those types of meditations we don't really talk about it a lot on these podcasts but i think we should yeah. it's something that if someone is interested in meditation or even in the quantum sciences space there's there's a field of logic that can help you understand, is it possible to go forward 
on the timeline and catch a glimpse? Is it not possible? Is it all just fake science? Maybe. But is it possible that you can catch a glimpse and have it help you? And if nothing else, is it just that it gives you enough confidence to create the future that you desire? Mm -hmm. Does it matter? Like these are all wonderful things to talk about. And I don't know that we've really talked about it yet. I agree. Yeah. Feel free to let us know in the comments below if you think this would be an interesting topic. Like I, I'm, I would love to, to share. I mean, it's, uh, we were kind of just talking a little bit before and you know, that's, we experience it in, in just a lot of people experience deja vu. Well, what is that? And how does that relate to this? And that yeah. might be really fun to kind of start from that perspective and, and expand on that. So there's a lot of things that we as humanity experience on the every, on a daily basis. And I don't think we've really taken the time to uncover and recognize actually how profound and, and in what ways we can actually bring it into intention uh, versus things that are just happening. And we're like, oh, you know, I don't know what that, that is. So I'll just push it. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I know I did a lot of that. And then the more we dove in and I was like, wow, these are all amazing like they feel like universal secrets, but they're actually, it's, they're not secrets. They're, it's abundant. It's been a part of humanity for thousands of years and, and things that can help us shape and grow and, and connect at a way that was I never even knew possible. Yeah. And so, yeah. I'd love and again, to it goes back to personal truth, right? Yeah. So what is true for me in that space mm -hmm. may not be true for you in that space. But does that make you crazy? Does that make me crazy? Or does that just make us in different spaces in our forward movement in our lives? Yeah. And how can we honor that? Yeah. Which is why I desired to circle back to it. <laughs> so I think that's a great place to wrap up. I love it. So if you would like to hear more on that topic, absolutely let us know down in the comments below. And if you like what we're doing and you haven't had time yet, definitely take a moment to hit that subscribe button and that like button. We love hearing from you. Until next time, we'll see you in the community.